بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الأطهار الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفاج صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات Insha'Allah, this year will be the year of the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Farajo Sharif with the blessing of another loud salawat. Insha'Allah, all of us gathering tonight will be amongst his companions and his sincere soldiers with the blessing of another loud salawat. وَأَجْرِ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى يَدَيِ الْخَيْرِ ولا تمحقه بالمن <coughs> oh Allah let good flow out from my hands upon the people and destroy it not by my making them feel obliged another segment of dua makarim al-akhlaq by our fourth imam Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam Inshallah, we get a little bit warmer. Let's have another louder salawat. <laughs> the word choice of Ahlul Bayt, as we have mentioned, it's very careful with a lot of meaning behind every word that they choose. When the Imam says, Wa ajre, Wa Allah, let good flow out of my hands. Why use Ajre, Jarayan? In Arabic, they call the river Nahrun and Nahrul Jari, a flowing and a running river. Why Imam uses the word Ajre? Let goods flow, not what let goods be done to people from me. The word choice are very, very important. And a very, very key point we are going to start reminding ourselves from tonight because it's going to get a lot of practical segments of dua everything that we talk about it which is good we should apply it first at our own homes in our own homes with our own family many times we learn something interesting good characteristic good moral when we go out we apply it but when we come home we forget it for example, we learned that Beshrun fi wajj, to be happy, to have a happy face, to have a smile on your face, it's good. When we go out, mashallah, we're laughing, enjoying, greeting one another, people, especially the opposite sex, wow. As soon as we go home, like Shemr ibn Joshan walked into the house. Whatever we do which is good, we're going to talk about it. Everything that we say it's good, first it should be implemented at our, say it. One person only learned it. Where should we apply it first? Our own home. Everything that we're going to talk on from tonight. Oh Allah, let good flow from my hands. We have two kinds of charitable cause that we can get involved good deeds that we can get involved one that is only one time we get reward and this is it it's it's not running good deeds let me give you an example every night a family sponsors an iftar and feeds the believers it's only one time you feed 
100, 150, 200, 500, 1,000 people, this is it. Tomorrow, you're not going to get any more thawab because of what you did last night. Even though this act has a lot of thawab, the hadith says, ما من عمل أفضل من إشباع كبد جائح There is no better deed that you can do than feeding a hungry individual. And all of us, we are hungry. So the person who gives us iftar every night, every night, may Allah bless them, they get a lot of thawabs, a lot of rewards. May Allah bless them. And hopefully, by now we have learned that our intention should be, when I'm giving iftar, not to show off, look, you brought one dish, I'm bringing five dish to iftar. Because if that is the intention, we're spending the money, we're getting tired, but no rewards. Remembering, reminding ourselves about the importance of intention. So that is one kind of good deeds. Broken, one time. You pay something and you get a reward. This is it. You help a needy person, you give him $5, $10, $100, you get rewards for those $100 and this is it. One time benefit. One time good deeds and rewards. There's another kind which is continuous. It's like a running river. It doesn't stop. We invest in something, we do an act, we undertake a good deed, we finished, but the good deed still continues and we get the rewards. Imam says, Oh Allah, make my charitable cause to be running and to keep getting me a reward. Let me give you a very, very tangible example. They're about to expand this place and build a school and make another, make another hall and make a kitchen. If you give one night iftar here, as we said, one time, thawab, 500, X amount of people you fed, you get the thawab. But you, if, if you invest, if you give money for bricks that you guys have on the memorial boards, people who have donated bricks, until how many years this masjid will be? 100 years? 1,000 years? You die, you're still getting the thawab every day. How many people come here? You get the thawab. Continuous gaining thawab. They built a school. Every time that individual comes and learns in the school, you get the thawab. Even you pass away and another hundred years, people still come, they still learn, you get the thawab. It was one time that you paid, but the cause and the purpose and what you invested in gets you continuous return. All of us, when we are working, we, send some, we keep some money aside for our 401k retirement plan. So when we get retired, we don't have any other money. We, I mean, we don't have any more income coming as far as working. So this retirement plan gives us back. Don't we? Some people do, some people don't. We all do. We save in a retirement plan. So when we are no longer able to physically work, that money gets back to us. This is what exactly Imam is telling us. Start sending money, start investing your money in a retirement plan that when you die, start giving you back also. Not only while you are alive, it gives you. If you die, still that charitable cause is continuing and you get the rewards. Building Husseinias, building masjids, publishing books. There are a lot of people, as we said in one of the nights, people who have written books about Ahlul Bayt salam, but they don't have money to publish it. If you give money for those books to be published, every one individual who reads this book, you get the thawab. Brother Hassan comes here every night, he records the lecture. He's putting his time, his effort, he's going to go home, edit it, put it online, it takes time from him. When he uploads it, everyone who watches this videos, and inshallah they get guided, 
and inshallah they start doing something, he gets the thawab. He dedicated one, two, three, four hours. He keeps getting rewards by every individual who watches it and every individual who takes an initiative. For example, a person he's hearing this, watching this video, he goes and he pays $1,000 to publish books. For example, Brother Hassan gets the thawab because he did something that is continuous. Building hospitals, helping one individual, sick individual is very good. We must do it. He needs a kidney. He needs to buy a kidney. Okay, we, spe we collect money for them to go and buy a kidney. But that is one individual. Even we're going to get thawab on and on and on. But why we don't invest in a hospital which every day treats hundreds of people and we're going to keep getting rewards. Shaykh, hospital takes millions of dollars. I only have hundred dollars. You'll get reward for that hundred dollars that you invest in this big project. Whatever that might be. وَأَجْرِ oh Allah, make these charitable place in front of me. People and projects that they need and they're going to get me rewards. Doesn't matter if I do or I don't get involved physically, I still get the thawab continuously. Because we really need it. As soon as we die, hadith says, everything stops. Three people come to you until your grave. One, your family. They will let you, you tell them, family, please don't leave me alone. I worked for you. I put my time for you. Sleepless night. I did what I did for you. Please, please do something for me. They will say, mom, dad, we love you to death. But as soon as they bury you, they're not going to sleep next to you and the next to the grave that night, graveyard at night, bring me one family that slept on the next to the graveyard of their parents that night. As soon as it gets Maghreb, run away. Graveyard, scary. That's the first individual, it's gone. Second person is the money, wealth. Wealth, I did work for you, I gained money, they told me to pay, I did not, I kept saving and saving and saving. Help me. Well, the only thing that I can do for you, the wealth is saying, the only thing that I can do for you, it's your kafan. I'll give you one kafan. That's it. Nothing more. Third individual is your a'mal. He says, I'm going to be with you. If we start investing in charitable causes that will strengthen this individual, every night he comes with us, he's more powerful, he's stronger. He will stop us from any harm. I'm next to you. Your amal is getting you thawab every day, every day. You're in your graveyard, still you're getting thawab one day after a day after a day. For example, a person, my uncle, back home he called me. He said there is a lady, a widow, Alwiya Sayyida. Her husband was abusing her, so they got divorced. She has one kid. She's in need of $600 for her to get into a training to become a makeup, makeup artist so she can start making makeup and gaining revenue, gaining income. You pay $600 for this while she's, she's going to keep gaining for two months and a half class and then she's going to start working that brings her income she doesn't need to beg she's alwiya we cannot give her sadaqah my uncle said do something about it another project another project another project a brother from your own community here he has established an academy in karbala he is trying to get orphans and inshallah by idol fadr they're going to start He's starting an orphanage academy. They bring boys aged 10 to 12, about 20 students. For 10 years, they're going to teach them English, technology, martial art, martial arts, akhlaq, media, anything that they can that after this 10 years, when this young orphan becomes 22 year old, when he goes back to the community, he's not going to be a beggar. He knows language. He knows technology, he knows martial arts, he has akhlaq. 
He will start supporting his own family and hopefully he can get a very good job in government or in te television and TV channels and then he's going to give back to the community. He's asking for $200 for individual for every month. Can we do it? Of course. One time we just go and eat in a restaurant with a family and we come back, $100 is gone. Isn't that right? One time, if not more. If we want to be very, very, very cheap, one time to a restaurant a month, we come back, $100 is gone. We go shopping for the family one time. Things that if we need, we have to buy those that we need. It's not a need. I have 10 pair of shoes and new shoes comes out. $200. I'm going to go and come back. That $200 is gone. But if I invest in this orphan, he is raised. I'm building a next generation. That orphan is going to give back to the community. I'm going to get the thaw up. If we look around, we'll find these kind of projects. It has to become our main goal. Where can I find these kind of projects? I can give whatever I can. When we look at the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam, they saw that Imam gets involved in every good deed that is possible. Here's a, here's a good cause, he gives something. He gets involved. Another good cause, he gets involved. They told him, Imam, why so many? You're involved in one project, two projects, three projects, five projects. is enough. Imam says, I don't know which one of these projects are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I get involved in all of them. If one of them gets involved by Allah, gets accepted by Allah, I'm satisfied. Imam Ali alayhi salam that doesn't need any good deeds. He is good deed himself. He's the manifestation of good, good deeds. But he's teaching you and I. Masjid, here you go. Five hundred dollars. I can. This is how much I can do. Hundred dollars for this cause. Two hundred dollars for this cause. Five hundred dollars for this cause. Thousand dollars for this cause. It has to go to yaqeen and iman, which we're not going to repeat it. Wa ajre lenas. What a beautiful faith we have. What a beautiful teachings we have. Thanks to our parents that they brought us with the love of Ahlul Bayt, with the teaching of Ahlul Bayt. Oh Allah, let flow, let good flow out of my from my hand for the mu'mins, for the believers. No. For the Muslims, no. Lenas for humanity. Alaykum as-salam. Please let's recite a loud salawat and move forward. Let's do another loud salawat. What does the teaching of Quran by the glasses of Ahl al-Bayt teaches us? Because Quran has a teaching. And we can view the teaching of Quran with two glasses. One glass is the glasses of Ahl al-Bayt. And the other glasses, let's not mention it. Let's keep the one glasses at least clear. The teachings of Ahl al-Bayt, every day, brother, after Salah, what he reads? Allahumma adkhil ala Ahl al-Qubur as-surur. Oh Allah, instill happiness and despair of the inhabitant of the grave. Do we say Allahumma adkhil ala Ahl al-Qubur al-Mu'mineen as-surur? No, everybody. This is the teaching of Ahl al-Bayt. We are not narrowed, we are not limited. Allahumma aghne kull faqir. That faqir is Muslim, mu'min, believer, atheist, Jew, Christian, Buddhist, agnostic, whatever faith that he has, we don't care. Oh Allah, I prayed, Ahl al-Bayt teach us, pray for everybody. Allahumma aghna kulli faqir. Oh Allah, enrich every poor person. We have not been taught to be very narrative, narrow mind. Oh Allah, every believer just give them what they need. A mu'min, not even Muslim. Every mu'min. No. Allahumma ashba' kull ja'ah. Oh Allah, satisfy the hunger of every hunger individual. You see how much they're widening our view to the world? When we read the du'as, du'as are teaching us. 
It's not only reading the dua, alhamdulillah, dun, 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 dun. alhamdulillah, we finished the dua. No. We have to think and ponder about the dua. Why Imam is telling us to say, Allahumma ashfi kulla marid. Imams of Ahlul Bayt, as we said in the beginning of tonight's lecture and a couple of nights also, when they use the language, the word choice, they know what they're using. And there is a reason behind it for you and I to have a wide view and to be good to everybody, not only to a believer or to a Muslim or people from my own ethnicity. People of Pakistan, I'm good with them. Afghanistan, no. People of Arabs, I'm good to them. Iranians, no. American people, no. These people, yes. They're not mentioning, these du'as are not mentioning any ethnicity, any religion, any faith. Imam says, and let good flow out from my hands upon the people. Where do you have this kind of teaching? Lenas. Mankind. I, as a Muslim Shia follower of Ali ibn Abi Talib, I should do good for mankind and continuous good. There is a good cause run by a Christian church. Why we should not get involved? Why not? Well, they're Christian. Let it be. A good initiative that I hope the management of this center will start looking after it on the birthday of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Let's have salawat by his name. On the birthday of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, third of Sha'ban, contact Red Cross and start giving blood. Brother, we don't know who they're taking the blood to. Maybe this guy is kafir and he's going to go and kill somebody and that's going to be my blood. Please. Please. What kind of logic is that? Make it every year. And then slowly people, I already contacted it by the Shaban. I was not in our center to follow up for it. They will, as soon as you email them, they will email you back. They only need 50 signatures that we are willing to donate blood. And if you start donating blood here and slowly, slowly the words get around that there is a Shia mosque, they are donating blood on the birth of, of their third imam. Their, imam. their imam was born. They're trying to give life to the people who are in need by donating blood. We still we start gearing the media toward ourselves also a little bit. Not everybody is going to rush. Not all the medias are waiting for us. No. They have their own agenda. At least one or two or three. Slowly, slowly the word's going to spread around. That's pe that these people are doing something for humanity. Giving blood. This is the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam. I'm going to repeat. And let good flow out from my hands upon the people. We have to change our mindset. In the street I'm walking, somebody needs help. I'm going to help them. A needy person. Oh, this person, I don't know. He's going to go take the money. I'm going to go buy drugs and alcohol. And How do you know? How do you know? If he was standing next to the alcohol, he says, okay, give me money. I'm going to go buy a beer. So, okay, you're right now, you're convinced that this is what he wants to do. How do you know where he wants to spend? He's Christian. Let him be Christian. He's agnostic. Let him be agnostic. We are doing du'as. These du'as should reflect our action. When we say, Allahumma ashba' kulla ja'a, I have to try to feed at least one or two or three or five people that I can. Let them have whatever they have. There is one individual, a believer in Maryland. He loves cooking and helping the needy people. Every Saturday, there is a shelter near him by DC every Saturday he cooks for 500 people and he goes and he gives to this home shelter to the needy people doesn't matter what they believe he has become to this level of certainty that if I help mankind period Allah will give and mashallah Allah has given him I tell him he, he does, he has a company, HVAC. I tell him, Haji, can you come and help us? He's like, Sheikh, we get a lot of contracts. We do, I don't have time to just come and do something for you. Contract after contract. Of course, when you give, doesn't matter who you give to. When you give, Allah gives back. قَالَ الْإِمَامُ مُوسَى بْنَ جَعْفَرْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ 
لأن أهل الأرض لمرحومون People of earth they will receive the mercy of Allah while condition why you will receive mercy of Allah ma tahabu while they have love for one another أن أهل الأرض how much mercy we have in this land بلاد الكفر nation of kufar in DC Virginia five days of week we get rain isn't this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't this a blessing five days out of the week we have rain one day that we don't have rain we say alhamdulillah let's go out let's go do some barbecue and people back home Muslim country they're praying oh Allah a drop of rain or two why it's about giving Prophet Musa السلام, he went and he said oh Allah curse my nation Allah said after a day or two it's going to be a drought and they're not going to be in risk will not come for them he comes tells them if you guys don't believe in what I say this is what's going to happen to you Allah will stop sending his risk and his sustenance upon you within the next three days next three days comes nothing happens still the risk is coming they start laughing at the Prophet Musa he goes back to Allah basically in my words Allah are you kidding me like are you playing me in the middle Allah says go and see their houses what they have done from the day that you have told them that Allah will stop your risk they made a big hole between this house and this house there's a wall they made a big hole they start sharing food with one another if they are mercy upon one another how I can how can I not be mercy upon them they deserve Allah's punishment but because they are mercy upon themselves they show mercy upon themselves have mercy upon the one who's on earth the one that is in heaven will have mercy upon you whomever is on this earth this is the teachings of Ahlul Bayt for us can we just get this and just tell the people come come look at our religion and everyday dua that we do in Ramadan and instead of praying for ourselves we say Allahumma ashba' kull ja'a' we're praying for everybody not for myself this is Islam that West has not been introduced to yet and is whose responsibility all of us sitting here and watching this it's our responsibility and ahl al-ard na marhumun ma tahabu while you have love amongst yourself allah will send a blessing upon you another hadith by imam al-sadiq alayhi salam qala al-sadiq alayhi salam qala rasulullah he's narrating from rasulullah al-khalq ayal allah creation or allah's family fa ahabu al-khalq ila allah the best creation in the eyes of Allah don't we want to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأَحَبُّ الْخَلْقَ إِلَى اللَّهِ the one that Allah loves the most مَنْ نَفَعَ عَيَالُ اللَّهِ the one who benefits the family of Allah did he say المؤمنون عيال الله the believers are the family of Allah did Imam says Al Muslimun Ayalullah Muslims are the family of Allah whomever wants to be loved by Allah the most should give to Muslims no Al Khalq Ayalullah Khalq which is not only human being animals they're Allah's creation also I was reading a story I'm not sure how authentic it is but it makes sense with these ahadith it makes sense we cannot doubt it Rasulullah when he went to Mi'raj he said in heaven I saw an adulteress a woman na'udhu billah who, who committed adultery she was in heaven say what a woman who committed adultery she was in heaven he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how comes she has committed adultery she is in heaven what has she has done that 
got your mercy and forgiveness. He, Allah says one day she was walking. She saw a dog. She was very, very thirsty and was about to die. She went to a well, took her abaya out, placed it into the water, sucked all the water. She came and she squished, squeezed the clothes in the mouth of the dog. That dog was no longer thirsty. Because of that action, I'm going to forgive her what she has done. Be kind to animals. Animals, al khalqo. Then say al insanu ayalullah, al khalq. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa taala has created as family of Allah, fa ahabu al khalq ila al khalq ila Allah, man nafa ayalullah. The one who benefits ayalullah, the family of God. Wa adkhal ala ahl bayt surura. Whomever brings happiness to these families, whatever background they have, if they are criminal, if they are not Muslims, if they are from wherever in the world they are, they are family of Allah. More ahadith. And I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it. We're going to have for another night, but we still have another five minutes. Qala Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Man sami'a rajulan yunadi ya lil muslimin. If an individual hears somebody screaming, all oh, Muslims, he has a need. Man sama'a, sama'a rajulan. He hears an individual is calling out. Again, I'm going to repeat this, what I have repeated five times. He doesn't say, man sama'a mu'minan. Man sama'a musliman. Man sama'a yahudiyan. Man sama'a rajulan. If you hear an individual, rajulan, a man, be it man or woman. Yunadi. He's screaming out, Ya lil muslimin. Oh Muslims, help! Help me. Falam yajibhu. He doesn't reply back to him. Falaysa bi Muslim. This guy is not Muslim. How many times I've, I've said to myself, true Muslim. A believer. I'm a true believer. Rasulullah said he's not a Muslim. Forget about the believer. He's not a Muslim. If an individual, no matter again what background he comes, what religion or faith he follows, he says, Ya lil Muslimin, I need help. And we don't help them. We are not Muslim. I am not Muslim. Continue. So this is as far as general concern. Khalq. Mankind. Let's get to the believer, which definitely have more rights upon us. A person comes to the imam. We had a teacher. He said that his teacher, he's a very, very pious individual. He said, my teacher, the teacher of mine is about 60 years old. He said, my teacher, one day he said, I want to teach you hadith that has 10 elements that you guys have to make sure do. He said, we got the pen paper our teacher which was very pious start saying bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim qala imam fulan do this we wrote the first one we're waiting for the teacher to say the second one we're waiting we're waiting he didn't say the second one we we told him why don't you say the second one he said go apply the first one come back i'll tell you the second and the third and the fourth because the more that we know and we don't do, it's upon us. Oh Allah, I knew only one, so I did not do only one. But if I get to know 10 and I don't do 10, I have more sins on my shoulder. So a person comes to Imam Sadr and says, Imam, tell me what are the rights of a believer upon me? Imam tells him, go ahead. I know if I tell you, you might not be able to do it. So that's going to be sent for you. He insists, no Imam, please tell me. I really want to know what is the rights, what are the rights of believers upon me? Imam said, right. All of us, we are believers here. We have rights upon one another. Imam says the first haq, the very bare minimum, Aysar, this is the easiest haq that you have upon me and I have upon you if I'm a believer. 
and to hibba lahu ma to hibba li nafsik to love whatever you love for you for yourself to love it for him you're about to say something about him you want to do something good you love it that he does it for you you should do it for him and to hibba lahu you love for him what you love for yourself what, what and hate for him what you hate for yourself let's just take these two because it's like about eight nine actually 12 more rights let's just work on these two that's it that becomes our action plan as soon as I want to do something toward another brother or another sister I'm about to say something about another brother or another sister let me just think for one minute do I love her to say the same thing about me if yes I'll say it if I don't love that thing to be said about me from her quiet I'm about to do something for her if she loved if I love somebody to do this for me I should do the same thing for them also become very difficult and really really disciplines our behavior as soon as somebody comes say what you think of this brother as soon as I'm about to say ah, no I don't like it somebody said if he would say something about me I'm gonna inshallah he's a good brother inshallah they're not going to punish us if we don't say anything. But if we said it, when we have not said anything, we're not going to be rewarded nor punished. Nothing. Actually, we're going to be rewarded for being silent if it's something bad to say. But when we say something, either we're going to be punished or we're going to get rewarded. It's 50-50. Why should I take a chance? So I should think about it. Do I like it or not? Last hadith, I had a lot to say, but the brother took 15 minutes of my time. It's okay. We, and we have to get to say the Khadija, salamullah alayha. Qala Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Ma amana bi. He has not believed in me. Man bata shab'anan. If he goes to sleep while he's full. His, he's no longer hungry and his neighbor is hungry he has not believed in me again I'm going to repeat it did he say Jarun Mu'minun? no did he say Jarun Muslimun? no he said he has not believed in me the one who sleeps with his stomach is full and even a little bit extra that he doesn't have a place to breathe in somebody was eating a lot they said, at least you should leave some space for water and for oxygen. He said, water, it will find its way down. And air, if it got in, get in. If not, don't worry about it. The food, let's enjoy the food right now. If he sleeps satisfied and his neighbor is hungry, Rasulullah said, he has not believed in me. Let's take a couple of minutes about Sayyidah Khadija. Khair being benevolent giving from whatever you have she's not a normal ordinary person the most beloved wife of Rasulullah amongst all every day the another wife said that every day Rasulullah used to leave the house he used to remember Khadija 25 or so years they were together why what made Khadija Khadija she gave everything she, that she had physically, emotionally, and financially to Rasulullah. This is yours. Financial support is one aspect of the life of Sayyidah Khadija Salamullah to Rasulullah. That is one aspect. Every time that Rasulullah will feel the pain and will feel struggle, he would come and he would get ease from Sayyidah Khadija Salamullah alayha action plan let us go home tonight and research a couple of stories about the life of Sayyidah Khadija what made Khadija Khadija and there are many stories many YouTube channels and videos that you can find learn it and educate our kids about her life Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma ajjil lawaliyik al-faraj Allahumma ajjil lawaliyik al-faraj 
اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوات